Every video we find more and more things that no one expected to find. As we travel the world looking for new discoveries, there are always more to be found. Crocodile can be really dangerous. We'll show you things that are not only surprising, but are also unnerving. Be sure to share with your friends. Here are 15 unsettling discoveries in Africa no one can explain. Skeleton Coast In Namibia, there is a coast that's known as the Skeleton Coast. It's known as this because so many ships have crashed there. This has left ships littered all over the coast in various states of decay. Because many of these ships have been whale and seal hunting, they often leave bones. Commonly, the ships crashed because of offshore rocks and the deep fog that often comes into this part of the coast. What's worse, when people survived the ship crashes, they had to wander through the desert with only the shelter and food they could find in the wrecked boats. The bushmen of Namibia call the region the land God made in anger. However, maybe not everything relates to this area as bad but some are not, with boats in the last century still sinking in the water. There are also stories of one boat sinking and other boats coming to provide supplies and get survivors to safety, only for the very same boat to sink later. One of the biggest stories is from a World War II ship. The Dundon Star, which was over 13,000 tons, and sunk other ships in the effort to rescue the survivors. It took over two months to get some of the people in the ship to a place of complete safety, we would suggest not vacationing too close to here. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? The Afar Rift. Sometimes we're able to follow the creation of rivers or even lakes. However, in the Afar Rift, we're able to see the creation of an ocean. It started when a crack started the rift running down the continent in a matter of days. In that short time, the ground sunk by two meters. Given months, more crevices formed and the ground fell over a hundred meters. Magma or volcanoes began to come to the surface. This is what will become the ocean floor and the amount of movement we saw in this time generally takes several hundred years. However, scientists say it could be 10 million years before there's a full ocean within Africa. It's also going to have more earthquakes and volcanic activity before the ocean. And in September 2005, they had seismic activity lasting around 48 hours. For now, the rift is in Ethiopia and 35 miles long, but it's expected to keep separating and possibly rapidly. The area has always been known to be intense, as the days regularly get to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the plates are moving at a speed of about one inch per year, but that's still a lot more progress than generally could be seen being made. The ocean crust is different from the other crust, so because of that, we're still able to see progress being made. <laughs> mysterious Metal Monolith In Congo, a metal monolith mysteriously appeared in the middle of a public square. This isn't the first time something odd has shown up in the Congo. A few months ago, an unidentified flying object fell deep into the forest, However, that eventually turned out to be a downed internet balloon. The metal monolith has no easy explanation. However, some people state they had seen people digging a hole there the day before. Still, the giant metal structure was not something people could be comfortable with. The large triangle structure was set on fire and beat with sticks until it was gone, to prove to aliens that were not so easily taken over. There were also theories that it was made by the Illuminati or Freemasons. Similar monoliths have actually shown up in Utah, Turkey, Colombia, the Netherlands, and Romania, as well as a few other locations. The possibly most realistic theory is that there are artists behind the monoliths, but with them being so spread out, there is still the possibility that it was no artist or perhaps that it was a collection of artists. At this point, someone would have to come forward for us to be sure, and we don't think that will happen anytime soon. Share your guess with us. We'll leave the jury out there but we want to know just what you think. <laughs> hidden Desert Graves The hidden desert graves aren't exactly hidden. They can be seen from overhead maps. However, on the surface, they can be a bit harder to make out. Their elaborate pictures make from rocks. Their elaborate pictures made from rocks can be seen from the sky as if they were able to see them at all. 
rather than them being Neolithic humans with no way to see from a bird's eye view. The tombs where the graves are housed are known as keyhole tombs. Some of these are up to 1,000 feet long, which is about three football fields long. The rock formations show elaborate pictures often paired with the Eye of the Sahara. The Eye of the Sahara is an odd rock structure seemingly older than humans that looks like an eye, and some people think it's the upper level of Atlantis. That's much bigger, and it's uncertain how it was made. From the keyhole tombs, the inner circle is a mound for the actual burial, and the outer circles, made by rocks, seem to be for decoration. Some tombs are thought to be about 8,000 years old. Satellite images are part of what brought the tombs to light. Many have somewhat similar shapes, as if a mushroom inside a circle, but that's not always how it works, and sometimes the shapes are very unique. If you're interested in seeing more, satellite maps are the way to go. Take some pictures and tell us which one is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Abandoned Jungle Palace This is another thing that comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. It started as a small village that was turned into a palace complex and even an international airport made by one ruler. However, when that ruler was replaced with someone else, the area was mostly abandoned. The whole airport gets two to three airplanes a week, mostly from the UN. The control tower for the airport is entirely abandoned, but it's really unnecessary with the lack of airplanes. It's odd to see a whole airport with only a handful of people inside. There was a water ministry building, but it was never finished, and it's now used as a school for the local children. In the past, there was a three-lane highway and a Coca-Cola plant. Now neither of those exist. There's an empty pool in an empty hotel that was said to have been swam in by the Belgian king and the French president. Now, there's not even water in the pool. There was also a movie theater in the motel, which is now ripped apart. Close to the motel is an unfinished bridge, suggesting how quickly they left. Now, the ruler's palace is also in ruins. It used to have 700 employees and 300 soldiers, but now it's overrun with plants. We suppose this can go to mean that power doesn't always last. <laughs> Fantasy Coffins there are a number of different ways people look at what will or won't happen after death. In Ghana, some people believe that people continue to live after death in a different sort of dimension, but that they could forget a bit between these two places. So the Ghana coffin makers make coffins that represent their own profession in some way so they can remember what they did and continue to do that in the afterlife. Coffins can cost up to $15,000 and are a serious business in Ghana. If busy, coffin makers can make up to seven coffins a month. The time is required for the excellent craftsmanship that they display. There are only eight to ten fantasy coffin makers in Ghana, so that means no more than 80 coffins are generally made a month, hardly ready to bring about worldwide construction. Loved ones generally decide what the coffin should be, rather than the people who died deciding before death. Common ones include expensive cars and farm-related images. There's more to the story. Their elaborate funerals often last five days, so the coffin is only the beginning. People from over 20 countries have bought these coffins. Though you might not be able to choose, we're curious to hear what type of coffin you would like to be buried in. Seven Colored Earths Mauritius, an island nation off the coast of Africa, has a very special collection of sand dunes in the middle of the forest. Because of different minerals left from volcanic activities, there are seven different colors of sand with many different hues. These include brown, green, violet, red, purple, blue, and yellow. It's also an odd place because Mauritius's heavy rains don't wash away any of the sand dunes. It's also interesting that if you mix the whole color together, at some point they will settle back into the colors that they're creating because of the different compositions of the sand. Obviously, for now, we don't try to mix the sand. Tourists are kept back from the sand with gates, and no one regularly enters the area. It can look at first like perhaps the colors just look different because of the shadows. But when your eyes become more used to the sight, you realize that the shadows aren't real and the colors are. Local shops sell small bits of the sand in bottles, and that's about as close as most people will ever get to touching or seeing the sands truly up close. There are also giant tortoises that walk around the park as well, making it the perfect place for whole families and children 
that'll definitely be amazed by the colors as well. <laughs> Three million year old footprints. When we first saw these footprints in Tanzania, we weren't really sure what we were supposed to be seeing. Yeah, they look vaguely human-like, but that doesn't mean much. People also said that perhaps they could be bears instead of human footprints. Of course, there are scientists much smarter than us who saw a few other things in the footprints. They're thought to be from about 3.7 million years ago. The footsteps are about 10 inches long and of some depth. Together, this suggests that these early ancestors of humans stood 5.5 feet tall and weighed about 100 pounds. That's much bigger than any of the early humans were thought to be at this point in history, radically changing what we thought the world looked like. Scientists thought we did not get this big until about 1.5 million years later. There's a possibility that the person who left this footprint was simply tall, but there isn't much scientific agreement on this. Some scientists say that they are probably like modern humans with only small differences, unlike modern apes who vary amazingly from species to species. Many scientists are now saying multiple species of human may have lived at once, making evolution much less straightforward than we thought. This means that our type of human lived when all others didn't, giving us another chance to guess at why. Do you have any thoughts? <laughs> Enormous Forgotten Monument Recently in Nigeria, there was a wall defense system found bigger than all others except the Great Wall of China. It's said that the walls were made around the Queen of Sheba from the Bible and Quran. In those stories, she visits King Solomon, and in some extra-biblical stories, married him and had a child with him. Other stories say that she didn't have a child, so the walls instead would go to show her glory. It wasn't discovered by the Western world until 1999. It takes about 2,500 miles and took at least 450 years to build. The wall doesn't seem to be only to defend, but also to separate one kingdom from the others in the area. This was a pre-colonial creation that must have dealt with many challenges, such as weather changes and with keeping up the country, with things such as education and art. It looks like the area has been inhabited as far back as the late Stone Age, and the walls hold in a whole city. The city itself was bigger than Rome. It was complete with a royal palace and shrines. There's also a local grove near it where the Queen of Sheba is said to be buried. This whole site suggests that highly organized society in this part of Nigeria existed at least three centuries before anyone knew. At the very least, this takes away a lot of the arguments that Africa is uncivilized. Very friendly crocodiles. In Burkina Faso, an inland nation in Africa, there's a small location called Bozul. In Bozul, there's a tribe who goes so far as to lay down on top of crocodiles, saying they're sacred and would never hurt anyone. According to the local legends, centuries ago there was a drought. A local woman was wandering around looking for water where a crocodile saw her and took pity on her and brought her to the river. The village hosted a party to thank them for their kindness, and that celebration is still held yearly as Kum Laker. They asked the animals for prosperity, health, and a good harvest. When a crocodile dies, the village buries them and even gives them a funeral. The villagers say when a crocodile cries out, something bad is going to happen, and it's up to the leaders to figure out what. Unfortunately, with global warming, there's constantly less water for these crocodiles, constantly pushing them away from the village, which needs water as well. There are legends about the crocodiles coming from the sky with water in the beginning, and that's why the two are so intricately linked. If the crocodiles must leave them, so will the water rather than the other way around. Even tourists are able to hug and sit on crocodiles if they're brave enough to do it. Are you? <laughs> ancient Astronauts In Algeria, in a national park, there is quite an impressive piece of ancient art. There are over 15,000 pieces of prehistoric paintings and carvings. Most people say there must have been many more in the past. Now, only one in five are clear. They show the basics of human culture, climate change, and animal migration at the time. People dance, hunt, and farm in many of the pictures, and the paintings show when the Sahara was actually filled with animal life who needed a different sort of climate. The Sahara used to be a savanna, and humans took full advantage of that. There are also interesting rock formations nearby, adding to the whole ambiance of the land. The art was found in 1910, and some of it has a very surprising collection of pictures. It looks as if there were aliens. The initial finder said one of the pictures was of a Martian god. There are pictures that look quite similar to spacesuits, 
which perhaps the aliens had to wear in order to come into Earth. Many scientists instead said that the odd drawings, such as beings that seemed to be in oddly shaped heads and elaborate bodies, were actually humans in their ceremonial garb. Some of the paintings even come in multiple colors, something practically unheard of at the time. Something else is odd. There are carvings that look like they could be the beginning of writing, but most people say it must have another explanation. No matter what, this is an interesting sight. Egypt's Mysterious Boxes Egypt is known for having a variety of historical mysteries and incredible artifacts, and this is one such example. In Egypt, there are 24 black boxes that make no sense for the period they would have had to have been made in. At more than 100 tons, they would not be easy to move. In addition, they're so expertly carved that they're down to a few microns without error. They're coffin-shaped and only about 12 miles from the pyramids of Giza. There are some hieroglyphics on the box, but they're very poorly done. Compared to the boxes, some archaeologists say they must be graffiti. The boxes are so well done that they're thought to be a airtight for thousands of years to come. The nearby burial site is thought to be 3,300 years old and built for Ramses II. It's also possible that they were for Apis bulls, which were thought to be sacred. There were also sarcophagi weighing 100 tons made to hold the remains of mummified bulls. The whole area of the mysterious boxes was found in 1850, when someone found a sphinx head coming out of the ground. It was an entrance into the underground burial places. Explosions were used to open the entrance to the area, and now we know about the mysterious, possibly alien, black boxes. <laughs> the Precontinent Experiment In the 1960s, near Sudan, Jacques Cousteau decided to start one of the world's first underwater cities. There were actually three attempts for underwater villages done by Frenchmen at this time, but all of them failed. The official use was to show that people could live underwater for a significant length of time, but it also did research for a petrol company. Precontinent is a French word, meaning the parts of the edges of a continent that are underwater. Two people lived there, and it was 11 meters under the water. They had hot water and food and air was compressed into the small living area. There was a record player, bed, library, and other such amenities. They were able to go outside from an air-locked port which they did to study fish and plant life as well as making maps of the area. There was also a small submarine to help with further study, which was kept 27 meters below the surface of the water. A third attempt was made soon after. They ran into some snags when the weather changed, then went 100 meters below the water surface. After that, Cousteau decided he wanted to save the ocean rather than help the petrol companies, so the production of further villages were put on hold. You can still see the villages with the proper scuba diving, but no one lives there any longer, though some places have enough air for people to still go into without full diving gear. <laughs> dead Vlay Dead Vlay can be translated as Dead Marsh. It's a completely dried out past oasis and now contains a few dead trees. In the past, the area flooded from a local river and the trees were able to grow. Then the climate changed and the water stopped, so the wildlife left. However, the trees are about 900 years old and still manage to keep from decomposing because of being in such a dry environment. The place can certainly be described as unsettling, and it was used as a psychic dream background in the movie The Cell. The sand around the dead vlay is so old that it literally rusted from the time spent in the sun. The trees also turned black in the sun, so roasted without water to have burned. It's part of the tallest dunes not only in the area but in the world. The best time to go is at sunrise or sunset, but we're partial to the latter so you can stay for the night sky when you can see the Milky Way. To get there through the mountain is quite a challenge, so it's important to go safely and probably with a guide. It's also important to get the very best gear to deal with the hot sun. It's still definitely worth it, however. Fairy Circles Fairy circles in the Namib Desert are widely disputed as to what their origin could be. In large circles, all the vegetation simply disappears. Then on the edge of the circles and past them, the vegetation starts once again. They can be anywhere from 10 to 65 feet in diameter. One of the stories is that they're footprints of old gods, crushing the vegetation until there's no more. Scientists are coming up with different stories but have a hard time studying it because it's such a big area. Still, because the circles are at regular intervals, they say there must be a scientific explanation. 
However, wouldn't the gods have a regular stride length? Just a thought. Some scientists say the area is so dry that they're competing too much for water to have plants everywhere. However, others have found termite colonies under the empty areas, suggesting that they could be for the reason of a lack of plants. This is further supported by the fact that the termites can't be too near each other without fighting for food, explaining the length between the colonies and patches without vegetation. Still, at this point, it's all theories. But what do you think? As you can see, Africa is an amazing continent with a number of unsettling things to discover. Are there any we missed out on? Let us know so we can include it in our next video. And be sure to share this one with a friend.